Hey there! Did you know Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Kroger app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Kroger today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. I just want you to know I've been recording this whole time, and I'm going to call this segment the pregame dad pod. <laughs> Uh, and Bob that's how and you I got to find a way <laughs> to marry recruiting and a dad pod, like all into one thing, and that'll be a that'll be our own personal podcast. We'll be sp- dad shit and some recruiting too. Be sponsored by Bourbon and Diapers. <laughs> Would it be a bad sponsor? Gerber, Pampers, and Pappy. Before we get free, get free Pappy out of this. I'll I'll get a kid by Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Assemble! It's back and bigger than ever. It's the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Now, here's the entire Soonerscoop crew. Carrie, Josh, Eddie, and Bob. All right, welcome back. It is another, an early edition this week of the Unofficial 40 Podcast. We welcome you all in. The entire gang is here. We didn't think that was a certainty, but uh, we made it happen just for you. As uh, really, I don't have to do a whole lot today because this is a very recruiting-centric podcast. Uh, Bob Prisbillo wrote the story. It's on the site right now. Nine commitments since July 3rd. Uh, and over the weekend, it seemed like Everything that OU fans wanted came true as it was topped off with Malachi Nelson uh, committing on Sunday. Our own Eddie Radosevich is just back from California. Uh, Welcome back, Eddie. Thank you. I brought back the Delta variant to Oklahoma. I'm going to be the first one. (laughs) Get out of my house right now. No, you're fine. Um, Just like the regular one. So anyway, (laughs) uh, anyway, uh, you seem to be alive, a well. Very alive, the very well. Apparently, were pretty good in California for you. Been eaten well. I even got taken in by I'm the not Nelson you're family. Fat. I mean, I am fat, and I did eat well while I was out fatter. there. I had a smoked pork chop on Saturday night that was unbelievable. It was very good. Did you make any promises while you're out there? No. No bags of cash were exchanged. No, I <laughs> could not afford that, but. I had some great tacos as well. I ate well. Was that better than was was uh is it Jack? Is that his dad's name? Eric. Eric. Was was Eric doing the cooking? Mr. Nelson to you. Uh-huh. We're friends now. But uh <laughs> no, they they had like some people come over. We can get into it. I'll 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 tell the story when we uh when we get there. Okay. Uh well, Bob Prisbillo is here. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Bob and Josh had a nice little dad pod uh, before the start of the show. Popping balloons. It's fun. Therapeutic. We all know it. Coincidentally, they popped the balloon to have those children as well. Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mistake pregnancy. <laughs> I'm not saying that. It, this is a birthday celebration pod, too. No, I mean, Lanny we already have birthday. to walk around eggshells with Tiffany. Let's not let's not have to walk around eggshells with Brittany as well. We can, we're can we celebrating birthdays around here. You know, it's interesting. And I, I honestly, I really intended to start this podcast just yelling at Xavier Hutchinson again because I got a lot of love for that last week. That My <laughs> really first interaction yeah. was me yelling at Xavier Hutchinson like multiple times guys like either texted me or dm me like that was amazing that i had to go back and check and make sure that's the first thing you said uh but you are fine talking laney and layla tiffany is not concerned about that you start effing with linda that's when tiffany draws the line so <laughs> We're not i don't the ones know what that says about anyways. the hierarchy of our house but that that's how You're that the works. one that always complains about linda it's not us and uh, ethic Guys, I'm going to go ahead and schedule that I will not be part of this week's pod if we continue with this sto- <laughs> this line. I am traveling with my wife. I could end up in any of a number of stream beds. All right, Linda's off the table. <laughs> now wonder Tiffany was asking me about the stream of Red- the Red River if it flows east or west. Uh, yeah, she's um, 
She's one of those ones that's like looks really sweet and acts really nice. Like she would, she would end me. Like there's there's not a doubt in my mind. But I we, have no she knows illusions. Put as, you to sleep too. as much as much Dateline yes. as I've watched. I that fits perfectly. <laughs> Guys, like, uh, that one. That's the one that's responsible for this. The uh, you know she. I mean, I, you know, no, nothing to say with her here. But there are rumors that sometimes heavy sedation drugs do just sneak out of the hospital so wow. just be careful in her presence so you guys are coming to Oklahoma. or anybody you that does the, anesthesia you or the kids uh no <laughs> i think the kids are safe they're probably the only people in this house that are safe um other than of course linda but um yeah it's it's not good well, you're coming up north make sure that you bring some for cousin eddie <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get to it. Uh, it was a big weekend. It's been a big month. Um, but, Josh, uh, I, I, I find it hard. Like, you know, I know everybody's celebrating this. It's happy. Uh, and I'm not trying to crap on anything, but it's like, okay, so, oh, you got another five-star quarterback. Like, this is commonplace. But I know that, you know, people should be happy. They should celebrate. It's a big deal. But my God, Lincoln Riley is just a machine when it comes to recruiting quarterbacks. Oh, it is. I mean, like, it's, it's jaded our whole perception of what it means to go get these guys. Because, I, guys, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to make sure I'm right about this, but I'm pretty certain that prior to Lincoln Riley's arrival, Rhett Bomar is the only five star quarterback Oklahoma had signed. I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, now, I'm always. L- I mean, Cody Thomas was pretty highly rated, and they Nichol had some other guys. Star? Who was Keith Nickel a five star? Or no, a no, he was a Rivals one hundred kid though. He was highly rated. Uh, you know, obviously, Keith Sam. Nichol. God, one of the top one hundred financial planners in the country amazing. right now. Amazing. That, that was that crazy. Um, Can't but talk no. about Keith Nickel without mentioning that he did wear Timberlands and a Bluetooth into the Fiji house <laughs> on his official visit. You love telling that story. I Because it's one of my favorite stories of all time. <laughs> that, you know, that feels like something that gets lost. Like, like, he didn't realize when he came down from Michigan, that's not what you do. Like, I, well, something tells me he walks into, a, he walks into the same party in East Lansing and it's totally fine. Like he's right on <laughs> I think brand. That's probably accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's something there that that just it, it's not totally his fault. Like it's just something normalized. But yeah, I mean, guys, you know, we're, we're you know, you look at Spencer Rattler in 2019, Caleb Williams in 2021, and now you've got Malachi Nelson already committed in 2023. It's it's huge for Oklahoma, and I think it's more about what it all means you know like i said and i I keep meaning to get this up on the board but i've talked to a lot of 2023 guys that are either already very interested or are now suddenly much more interested in oklahoma because of the fact that Treyon webb and malachi nelson committed it feels a lot like those couple of weekends in the 2021 class where you had caleb williams and uh i believe who was the other guy that went that weekend? I know there was Clayton Smith and Mario were one. And then, then it, oh, it was McCutcheon. Right. And, it was McCutcheon yeah, and Caleb. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, you know, you had those big multiplier weekends, and that's kind of what this feels like. And, I mean, you're getting guys that are not just, you know, obviously, Brandon Ennis. I mean, having the quarterback committed, having his good buddy committed, that makes a ton of sense. Makai Lemon, same kind of story. But guys like Javian Toviano from Arlington Martin, that's you know one of the top two or three corners in the country. He's he's talking about it. He's excited about Oklahoma. There's no connection there. There's nothing about him that's connected to any of those guys, except he knows they're really good, and you need a quarterback to win a national championship. So, uh, it it feels like this could work out as well for Oklahoma as any any of these guys that committed early, because not only is Nelson high profile. But I think he has a little more of that Caleb Williams recruiter in him than than we kind of are, you know, that he kind of puts out there. He's kind of low key, kind of soft spoken. We'll let Eddie touch on that a little bit more. But I, I think he is one of those guys that absolutely is already digging into the recruiting side of things. But the big question is, does he paint his fingernails? I didn't see any fingernail painting. 
But you never know when you get to college. It's a the time of is not a fan of the painted finger. It's a time of exploration when you get to college. And I would be completely old if I was going to say that maybe I might start painting my nails to be one with the uh, yeah to be one with the uh, the college community. I saw Caleb's uh, Instagram post this morning. He's got a new design on each finger. Beautiful. I wonder His if he does thumbs that. were outstanding. Does he I'll do that, that himself, or does he go to into a place to There's do no that? No way you do that yourself. You Talented do, guys can. You could do the the left fingers, but you'd have a hard time doing the right fingers. What if right he's uh, uh, yeah? What if he's that? I think we'd know, wouldn't we? I I have no idea. We can't be around these guys very often. But as an athlete, you would know that he threw the ball with his right or his left hand. Oh sure. Maybe he can't throw. Maybe he can just paint his nails with both hands. He just has the dexterity to paint. <laughs> that's the skill he chose designs. to develop. <laughs> I hope that's the, the. I hope that's added underneath his bio in the program. Can paint what nails if, with both fingers or both what hands. What if Lincoln Riley, because of a either this conversation or the the video or the pictures you guys are talking about, goes to Caleb and is like, "Hey, can you throw left-handed?" Caleb's like, yeah, that just never came up before. And they suddenly designed something into the offense to where Caleb Williams mystifies everyone with his left-handed throws. So I, th this could be a big win for OU. It seems like it's just an Instagram post, but it's more. They've already uh, drawn those plays up for Micah Bowen, who can do that. <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you. I mean, talking about personalities of, of quarterbacks and kids, I mean, you went out there, went out to California early. Uh, you actually got to do the commitment interview the day before he announced mm -hmm. it on CBS. Yeah, we met up Saturday evening over at the high school. Which you found out to be locked when you got there. Yeah, I mean, I we kind of knew. They didn't know if it was going to be or not. So it was, it, was a, it was a great trip to California, though, just as far as being able to interview him. The family was very welcoming, very hospitality-wise, great. Hospitable. 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 It was fun. It was a lot of good. It was a, it was a good time. So, uh, just what kind of a kid is he? I mean, you can tell through the interviews, like, he's well-spoken. Uh, and it's, you almost have to remind yourself, this kid's only 16 years old. He's only, you know, played his sophomore year of, of high school. That's the probably the number one thing that I kept having to remind myself. Because we even were talking, like, after we got done with the interview and his dad came up. Uh, and we were just sitting in the parking lot talking. And, like, I almost asked him. I was like, because they're, they're planning on getting out to Norman for a game this year on September 11th because of the uh, the night game. It's going to be the Western Carolina game. Right. They'll be able pay to play the pay-per-view. Won't have to rush out here. Won't have to take the red eye, all that kind of stuff. And, like, it went through my brain, like, oh, so maybe that'll be his official. And I was like, oh. He can't take he can't an take official. take an official yeah. yet. He's a junior. Till so, the summer of his junior year, that's when it is now. Yeah, right? I think they moved it up, didn't they? Because you used to not be able to take it until your senior year began, right? Well, yeah, uh, that's where the spring game. Or that spring. Or the sp yeah, the sp yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But Yeah, a couple years ago they moved it, yeah. yeah. It is hard to remind myself that he is only going to be a junior, and we kind of talked about it during the interview just as far as, you know, I, I think I said something to the effect of, I hate to ask this, but are you going to early enroll Lee? And that is the plan. He's already taken, uh, oh, I forget what those classes are called. I took them at uh, OSU OKC. The is it congruent classes. enrollment or something like that? I forget. It doesn't matter. But he, that's the plan right now to take it uh, or to get classes done so he can graduate early and get to Norman and do the uh, stuff that, you know, Caleb Williams and guys have done before, go through spring football. But it is uh, it is hard to remember that he is only going into his junior year. As he brought up, he really hasn't played a ton of varsity football in a way because of the weirdness of last year. But, uh, you know, I he, he, he handles the interview process very well. Uh, you know, I don't think that that was too surprising considering just how highly recruited he is. People always trying to talk to him, get him on camera and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, he has that flair to him as far as uh, you can tell he's the guy. You know, he, he he's comfortable being in that position and people looking to him for answers and, you know, being the leader of the recruiting class and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of, it's like he could hear us talking. Right. Two he minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, two minutes ago, he quote-tweeted something. I think I said on Sunday, yeah, it was, it was right after his decision, you know, for those that don't know, with just two commitments, OU had, now has the number one class in the country for 2023. Obviously, it, it, with numbers that small, it almost doesn't matter. But 
uh, you know, and he he told Eddie in that interview he they want to have the number one class in the country. That's their plan. And he quote tweets me. He's like, "Let's keep it this way." And then he tags Makai Lemon, Brandon Ennis, DeAndre Moore, Jalen Hale, and most interestingly, probably Lebius Overton, currently the only player in the country ranked ahead of him in the rivals' rankings. So that is, um, if OU could get any of those guys, even one of them, that that's a huge win for OU. You know, just a little bit more of backstory too. Him and Trayon Webb. I don't know exactly how much they talk. But they definitely have been talking, and they've been talking even before these commitments happened. Because, uh, you know, Trayon, I, what was it? When did uh, Cassidy do that interview? Was it last Thursday? Thursday. Yes, she yeah. did. It. Yeah, she did it Thursday. In the interview that we ran with him, he talks about talking to other commitments in the or commitment in the class and malachi was one of the names we didn't put that in the you know i edited, edited it out yeah. because we didn't his decision because yet. malachi hadn't made his announcement but this is something that it is definitely out there as far as you know webb and uh nelson are going to be the leaders of this 2023 group and i think that you know josh bob as you guys have alluded to time and time again there is a very serious conversation to be had when you can talk about Oklahoma making a run at the number one class in the 2023 group. And that's why it was so crucial to get them for the barbecue. I know, like you weren't disappointed, you weren't that disappointed if some of those guys couldn't make it. But just the benefits of anyone that wanted to go. Could you mention to- uh, Tobiano? That's someone that if he's not there, he might not have any connection at all with these guys. But it's just. It just puts you in the conversation. Doesn't mean all those guys, all those twenty twenty three guys, will be Sooners, but it lets you know that they're aware of Nelson, aware of Webb, and what's going on, and they remember that weekend. And it, you know, it's just something to give you a little ammo going down the road. It was interesting talking to the, you know, Eric, the the father, and Malachi as well, just as far as you know the presentation that was given to those guys during the barbecue and kind of what. I don't want to say swayed him because I think he had a pretty good idea of what he wanted to do before he got to Norman, but it was definitely a solidifying factor in his decision. And just the fact that, you know, I, I think that the, whatever you want to call it, like the presentation or the pitch or whatever that Oklahoma's throwing out there right now is just so much different than other schools as far as bringing, you know, I, I think that, you know, bringing current players' parents in, and basically having them stand up in a room full of uh, per- prospective uh, you know, students and parents and basically putting it all out there and saying, do you have any questions that you want to ask these parents about what it's like to, have, to be a parent of a, a current player? I just find that stuff to be kind of fascinating. And then, you know, I, I, at the same time, it's like getting the alumni back. And this might even go back all the way to the Sooner Summit when I rolled my eyes initially at the idea of it. It's played a bigger role than I ever would have imagined getting these kids to campus and the way that they were able to do things. Oh, I don't think there's any question. Oh, go ahead, Bob. That's right. It'll be interesting if the recruiting calendar changes because usually June is a dead period month. And it was only because of this year with COVID that it was opened up so that the former players could all come back to campus. And that obviously – you know, we talk about the cars that that was flashy for social media, but it was that having those former players back that meant so much. But 100 percent, the bar if the barbecue goes back to late July, as it usually has been, because the calendar goes back to how it was. I don't know if OU can ever really duplicate that feeling sure. once again. Sure, and that's because the obvious, all those players will be, you know, basically in training camp by then. Hell, we yep. got guys. Uh, reporting today on july 20th so you know the next week two weeks is going to be full of training camp reports I, i'm curious josh i mean nationally this is making a stir as you mentioned um you know the, the kid down at arlington um is is interested in the cornerback um what do you think it does it do anything for guys in state like Gentry or McClellan that there's so much buzz nationally around Oklahoma football right now? Does it maybe make them say, okay, maybe I shouldn't be overlooking them, you know, and this should be my main option? The things that are always interesting to look at are some of the things that you never could have predicted coming in. So 
three or four months ago, no one was talking about Gentry Williams and USC. So for Oklahoma to go into Southern California, literally right in USC's backyard, and take the quarterback they wanted, uh, that really, that at one point Clay Helton had told would be the only quarterback they were going to offer, and I know a lot of people kind of dating back to around New Year's, thought he was, you know, thought Malachi Nelson was headed to USC. For Oklahoma to go in there and win that, I, I think that gives Gentry some thought of, oh, oh, oh okay, this, these are, it's, it's not, it, it's subconscious. I'm not saying Gentry's, that's going to affect his decision, but it is one of those things where you say, okay, well, that guy could have went to USC, could have been the guy out there, but he'd rather come to Oklahoma and play. And those are the kind of things that, it, it tends to just be a domino effect. I think those things are always interesting to watch. Uh, with Chris McClellan, uh, USC's in play. I don't think they're nearly as much a threat as they are in Gentry's situation. Uh, but it's still, though. I mean, you know, you're talking about uh, – because, you know, Chris is – he's a smart enough kid to know that most defensive linemen are going to come in. They're going to need three or four years on campus. They're not a wide receiver that can make the, well, I'm going to be there for three years and go. Like, that's not really the way it usually works for, uh, for linemen on either side of the ball. Chris knows that. So he knows he's going to spend a lot of time with whoever the quarterback is behind him. And he knows Malachi is going to be that guy. So I'm sure Oklahoma is pushing that as well to him. But, yeah, you know, guys – and just to kind of go back for a second, when you're talking about that that barbecue and the timing of it and how everything in June was so unique, I just sat here and did the count. OU brought in six of the top 15 players in the country and eight of the top 30 in the month of June. I, I'm sorry, eight of the top 30 uh, will, will have visited over the course of the summer with Richard Young supposed to show up in a couple of weeks. So it's... It's unbelievable what they've done. Yes, I'm sorry, in 2023. Uh, what they've done over this summer is just, it's unprecedented. They've never seen it happen before. And I think while you guys are right that if it does move back to July, it's going to be really hard to replicate all the ex players coming back and all those, you know, those guys needing to go to mini camps and do their own football. At the same time, this was such a big deal and I think has resonated with so many people. I think you're going to get kids visiting just because they're like, well, those guys last year had an amazing time. I, I want to go. Kind of kind of like we've seen at other events around the country, you know, where like kids go to Alabama's camp because it's always a big deal. You know, it, it becomes almost something that feeds on itself. And I think that's what you could see over the next couple of years. I'm not saying it'll last forever, but I think the enthusiasm about it can carry over for a couple of classes where you see 2024 and 2025 guys show up um, almost based on reputation as much as anything else. Just to kind of reemphasize the type of recruiting job that I think, you know, it was kind of portrayed to me that Lincoln Riley did. I think it's probably safe to say six, seven months ago, I think Malachi Nelson was going to go to USC. I, in fact, I think it's almost a positive that that was going to happen. And they certainly, you know, full court press or whatever you want to call it, but like I, there were conversations that were had that like Malachi Nelson is gonna if he continues on the trajectory that he's on right now he's gonna play in the NFL someday, probably. Obviously, there's a lot that can happen in between now and then, but I think the pitch that was given to him is you can go anywhere. You're gonna go to the NFL, but if you want to be a number one pick and a Heisman Trophy winner, you'll go to Oklahoma. Is kind of the pitch that was given. Yeah, I, I mean. It's kind of hard to argue that if you throw the ball, if you throw the ball with really good velocity and accuracy, and you go to Oklahoma, you're you're going to be in position to be the number one overall pick as long as Lincoln Riley is there. Like, I mean, if Spencer Rattler goes number one, holy shit! I mean, to me, that would be the biggest accomplishment, more than just signing these five stars, is it, to have three this is number one overall picks. Is this a stupid question? It it was bigger for them to get a Jalen Hurts into the second round than it would be for Rattler to be the number one pick. You, you read my mind. I was like, this guy got Jalen Hurts into the second round. I don't know what bigger advertisement you could have. And that sounds than... so like backwards to say out loud. And I guess it kind of does in the same way. Like, I don't know. It, it kind of slaps you in the face as far as like saying, oh, number one pick isn't a big deal. I don't know. I, is, I guess that's it a, it's an inter that's that's such a like a Skip Bayless clickbait 
<laughs> so if you but, had like a, if it was like, I I hate myself for it. I think this is how it worked. Was it on Star Search where the audience voted? Yeah, they voted like what your star three and three was. quarter stars. Uh, like if you if you gave like clickers to everyone in the stadium halfway through Jalen Hurts' first you know season at Oklahoma, they probably would have replaced him with Spencer Rattler if they had had the opportunity. Like if it was up to them to make the call, and yeah. he finished second in the Heisman and went in the second round. Uh. Yeah, I, I, now I think when you talk about like what OU hangs their hat on, it's the back-to-back number one overall picks at quarterback. I mean, that's absolutely your your sales pitch. But as far as a singular moment that really shows a young player what Lincoln Riley can do, and I and it's not just even oh he made Jalen Hurts, a, he basically rebuilt his offense for a year to do some very different things than what we'd seen before, or at least you know introduce new wrinkles to make it fit Jalen Hurts much better. You know, because Malachi is a different kind of player than all of these guys. He, he's different in his own way. Um, so I, I think that's what he's shown is that, yeah, the, the basic ideas may be the same, but we'll make it fit whatever fits you best. Like, we're going to run the things that you're best at doing, not just this is our offense, you better learn it. Here's what's weird to me is, so – Spencer Rattler's getting all this hype about being the number one overall pick. Um, and I think all fans can agree, yes, he's a, he's an upgrade over Jalen Hurts. But we haven't seen him play in enough games and enough big games to where we can say definitively that he fits in the Baker and Kyler category. Like, we think he'll be there at the end of the year. We haven't actually seen it yet. We've seen him do stuff. You're like, wow, that kid's really got some arm talent. Would it be fair to say that we hadn't really seen that from Kyler Murray either, though? But it, was it because we fell back on, like, he's so athletic, you didn't have to worry about it? Well, I think he was he was also boosted by the fact that the NFL had to go all in on him. Because of baseball. Because of baseball yeah. and because Cliff Kingsbury was coaching the Cardinals. And, and if, if it hadn't have been, if it had been another coach, they might not have made him their first pick. He would have been a top 10, though, right? Yeah. Or top five, I guess. Even. Yes, just the number one overall. I think I, you that was a for it was Baker a perfect storm. I mean, it was nobody knew that Baker was going to go number one overall. Remember, they had the film crews following him, and that day came, and nobody really knew who was going to be the because the Browns didn't ever reveal their hand, and there sure. was no Adam Schefter <clears throat> reporting, you know, saying that this was going to ha- like the Browns kept it super secret. And then it happened, and you're just like, holy shit. There was shit, definitely some movement, happened. though, wasn't there? Like, I guess, God, this was, what, three years ago now or four years ago now? There was movement towards the idea that they were going to take him, though, by, may, by mid-afternoon of draft day. Yeah, but, I mean, there was also, you know, because Josh Allen was in that draft, right? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, it was all of those guys. Josh Allen, uh, Baker. Uh, Rosen. Darnold, 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 and uh, and was Rosen in that group and too? Rosen. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like we're missing one more. I think we are. Oh, uh, Daniel Jones, uh, the Giants. Wow, he was in that draft, right? Because mm. there was five of them, right? I thought Jones was with Kyler. Was he? I don't know. I don't remember yesterday. I can't remember four <laughs> years ago. Come on. Yeah, I'm not. All that, right, I'm not that guy. Okay, we got Baker. We got not Sam guy, Darnold. Pal. Josh Allen, Josh Rosen. Um, I yeah, think. I mean, now you're going. Pretty was there was there just list. four of them? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lamar Jackson. Oh, he went last in the first round. Yeah, yeah, yeah went last go. in the first round. You know the Ravens. So he's turned into be a failure. <laughs> he was only the 2019 <laughs> NFL MVP. Pick. God, 32nd overall. I'm sure they're furious with themselves. They could have had Austin Corbett with the next pick. But I will say this, Rattler's in a good position because it's not a great quarterback. I mean, there's he and Sam Howell. That's the only two guys people yep. are talking about. And I'm sure somebody will emerge. But, God, I mean, I th- I do think this, and I'm not, I think from what I've seen of Caleb Williams, there's not going to be any any sort of 
fans being unhappy that he is not this guy or that guy. I think he's going to stand alone as a guy that's like, okay, this dude's really good too. Malik Willis from Liberty is a quarterback that is on some boards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the Western Carolina guy will be draft eligible. Carson Strong from Nevada. I'd be lying if I said I knew anything about him. Western Carolina or Coastal? Coastal Carolina Carolina is what I mean. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's who I figured. I hope it's Western Carolina. Be a good test. The, oh, the the kid from Cincinnati as well, Desmond Ritter. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's another name. I don't get that fascination. That that's one of the, every every year or two. There's a couple of guys. I'm like, what? I don't I don't see it with him. But you know, we'll find out. Um. Okay, so let's not gloss over kind of what else happened in this last week because um, the kicker. Yeah, there was a kicker. Um, <laughs> Shout out, Gavin, Gavin Marshall. You know, what's funny is like kicker I, defender, Bob I talked to somebody on, uh, you know, part of the university that they were excited when they brought him in. What was that? It was the week. Uh, it was the last week of Lincoln Riley's camps when they brought the Marshall kid in. And they're like, yeah, he's he, really, uh, really he, good. He told me it was OK. Saturday 26 was the elite camp. But he showed up before that and mm-hmm. worked out for Lincoln and was offered and he sort of knew from that point on that that's where he wanted to go. And I, I believe the back, we don't have to spend much time on it, but I believe the backstory is like, he that's for, he's from an OU fan, uh, family or an oh, OU his family. His dad's right? a scooper. His dad's on the site. I mean, so to the point that Gavin actually, and I, I hope I'm not betraying Gavin's confidence here. His, he messaged me yesterday. He was like, my dad told me we brought, I brought down the, uh, the average star rating in the committee. <laughs> <class. laughs> son, you need to decommit so we can get the average star ranking back up. We you can recommit go at Oklahoma. some point. Yeah, but let's let us get like top five before you. Commit. That would be an all time OU fan thing to do is uh, decommit and walk on so you don't take up a scholarship for somebody. <laughs> Oh, you put him on scholarship like as soon as he arrives, but not like it's not promised. That would be so great. Sooner scooper dad move. Oh, that was so strong. I, I love it. Take I mean, and it was the rankings, it, son. And you could tell like it wasn't the crazy dad. It was absolutely like, ha ha, like this is funny that this has happened. <laughs> but then Gavin's like, but you know, I did this and I did this and I did this. And I'm like, dude, I know you're a really good kicker. Like, don't don't sweat it at all. Like, I was like, we'll get you a ranking. It'll happen. I was like, kickers, I think we tend to wait. Until they've committed, and they were like, okay, let's go watch his tape. Let's go see what he's done. And, you it's know, the first, I, it's the first dad in the history that didn't handle it by complaining about y- his son's ranking. Yes. Blame like, his son for not having it. I think say like, mocked his son rather than come to me and be like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, Josh. I mean, outside, Bob, I mentioned you wrote the story detailing the nine commitments since July 3rd. Uh, Obviously, you know, five stars, Trayon Webb, uh, number 56 overall player, 2023 guys. Outside of that, who, since July 3rd, what's the best get for Oklahoma, do you think? Is it Derek Moore or is it Jake Taylor or is it Jacob Sexton? Go ahead, Bob. I'll That's a lot it. of choices, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> the, I, the one I'm more curious about, because I think a lot of those guys, you know, you feel pretty confident of who they are. I want to see who Robert Spears Jennings becomes during the course of this season. Because I, I think the way o, OU, there's been some people say, oh, they didn't get, you know, uh, Miles Murphy they, or uh, Miles Pollard. Oh, they didn't get Austin Jordan. Like, are they striking out in the secondary? It's like, well, they got Bryce and Spears Jennings, and they just have a lot of faith in what those guys can do. And since Spears Jennings, being a BA kid, will actually get to see him. I'm just, I'm, I'm intrigued to see if the Tigers will let him be a two-way star the entire way, or if he means too much as a receiver for them to let to let him do that throughout the course of the year. And I agree with Bob. Like, I think he's one of those guys that OU fans aren't giving enough credit. He has a lot of raw, just raw, natural talent that I think over the course of the, the next, you know, six months, year, people will appreciate him more. It won't shock me at all if he ends up a four star in rivals rankings. But for me, Derek Moore, I, I am, I couldn't be more on board with, with Derek Moore as a possible star for Oklahoma. Um, 
different in a lot of ways than some of my other, you know, like I guess previous man crushes, the Shane Witters, uh, Danny Stutzman. I don't think it's so much that he's not appreciated as far as like, I mean, he's a four star, he's a Rivals 250 kid. So Rivals likes him. But I mean, when I watch Derek Moore, I see a guy that I'm like, this, this guy might end up in the five star conversation. I mean, I think he's that gifted and that talented. Now I want to see him in person. I want to see what is, you know, it, it may be a deal where, okay, he's a little shorter than we thought he was. Or he, you know, he's a little shorter armed. You know, it could be a lot of different things, but I watch a guy that just has a natural speed power combination, really combines them well. Didn't get to play a lot as a junior, so we don't know what's there. I just know I'm going off what's over a year old, and when I watch that tape, I'm like, wow, this this guy could be great. Now you've got to see him actually start to take those steps, but I, I, I love him. And, you know, when you're choosing, I mean, and you, you choose a guy like that over Jacob Sexton and Jake Taylor, who I think are future starters on your offensive line, um, you know, it, it's really impressive. And, guys, the thing that I don't know that everybody knows when you look at, and I know we're talking really 2022 more in this conversation, but in 2023, there are four Rivals 100 players that are currently committed. Two of them are committed to Oklahoma. Like, that's that tells you the kind of start and what you're establishing there kind of as a beachhead, and then you build with all these other guys that we're talking about OU trying to get in on. Kind of says something, though, too, that just the fact that you can sit here and have to kind of really think about it. And then not only the fact that you can think about it and then go to the defensive side of the football, as big as some of the commitments that they've had over the last month, I I don't know. I think it says something. I mean, when was the last time that you could sit here and talk about a defensive guy? And I guess you have over the last couple of years, but I don't know. It, it's less hit and miss. You know, you're sure. getting less yep. of the, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and I, I'm, I, I, Oklahoma likes him and I know why they like him, but you're not getting a lot of the Noah Arenze, the guy that OU offers and it's nobody else is really involved. You know, with the time, I think he had like Buffalo or, you know, I mean, he had some very group of five, very low FBS offers. Now that changed over time because more and more people came to see what it was that Oklahoma liked as well. But Oklahoma is starting to more and more be able to go battle with some of the big-time programs. And that's, like I said, that's what's interesting because there has been, um, I, I mean, we'll get into some other guys, but just as an example, Kenyatta Jackson. I, I talked about it uh, in the scoop, I believe, last week where there was some feeling that, okay, if Ohio State drops out because they think they're going to get a kid named Anai White, well, then does that open the door for Alabama, who's also in on white, to go in and start working on Kenyatta Jackson? Well, there's some talk that Alabama's starting to turn up the heat on Kenyatta Jackson. But speaking of Alabama sources, I don't get the feeling they thought they were making a lot of headway. I think Jackson could come down to OU and Ohio State, because I know he already told Clemson you know, they were probably a little late to the party. So if Oklahoma goes and lands a guy like that to go along with Moore, and then you find a way to close on Gabe Dindy. Almost anything else you do, whether it's Amari aboard, Deshaun Brown, however else the rest of your defensive line works out, you're fine. You, you've done a you've done a job that nobody's done on the Oklahoma defensive line in a long time. Side note, yeah, we need to uh, as a site need to go cover the SWAC next year. Somebody just tweeted out the media day meal. It looks unbelievable. <laughs> oh, you know, OU transfer. I'm looking at it too. Does yeah. that not look Go unbelievable? Ahead. I'll get into all that. This is Mac like their media days. Yeah. yeah. Oh, see, and the green beans with like any kind of meat in it, like a ham or a little bit of bacon, that's so underrated as a huge kick up to the green bean. I mean, I like any green bean, but that is. That's a winner for me. No, if you're a if you're a legit barbecue place, you've got to have green beans with the either pulled pork or, or brisket in them. Something. Mm-hmm. Agreed. That, that cornbread amazing. does look money. A little apple pie with a little whipped cream. Still need to get up to Clark Crew. Best cornbread in the city right now. I do need to get up there. Um, really good. You know, as much for ta- gift card, aren't you? I would pay for that. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even use the gift card. I. I would happily pay for that. 
I think he comes free though with your meal. So Eddie had a swag pickup today. There's swag. Pi- there's a swag pickup Absolutely. coming for Josh and Bob as well. Thank you to QT. I and stopped and got. I stopped and got gas at uh, QT. Yeah, I don't know why I looked down there and then said QT. I just always think about them. I, I really <laughs> was thinking when I was putting that together for you. I miss the breakfast pizza so much. It's so good. See, here's what they do. It's so so. I didn't realize this until I had my second slice when I was in Gainesville, because uh, I had to get another one. What they do is instead of uh, it's got the the cheese and the sausage and the um, whatever else is on there, but instead of using like Great pitch, tomato man. sauce, they use country gravy Ooh. as the bed. Oh. I didn't realize that until I had the second piece. It's so much better than that Casey bullshit. Unless Casey wants to sponsor it. I don't f*** with Casey's. I don't either. You know, we spent so much time talking about Sorry, Malachi you can't Nelson. Sorry, sponsor the pod. Trayon Webb and uh, Caden Helms were pretty big deals on Saturday as well. <laughs> That's the insane part. Name any other time in years that Trayon Webb, a top 50s, top 60 overall player in the country doesn't draw all the attention when he commits. Uh, and I, I think it says something for him. And, you know, people kind of say, oh, Florida kids. And don't get me wrong. Oh, you going to recruit both of these guys for the foreseeable future. I mean, and recruit them just as hard as they have been. They've got to know they're important. All those things have to happen. That, that's fine. You can understand that. At the same time, I think it's interesting that Trayon Webb, smart as he is, was, he knew. He knew the attention was going to go to Malachi. Like, he knew that was going to be the big story coming out of the weekend, and it didn't stop him. He didn't say, oh, okay, I, I wanna, I'm going to wait a week, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce it back a little bit. He didn't do any of that stuff. He just stayed locked in, picked it, you know, went through with it. He knew what Malachi was doing. Malachi knew what he was doing, and they just went forward. And I think that says a lot about him as a kid and kind of where he is with Oklahoma. He seems very settled on this decision. I you know, for those that haven't seen it, go go check out. We we um, brought in a kind of a, a a ringer for us. I guess you know you call it a stringer, but Cassie Hill, I thought did a bang up job with the interview we had to do good. with Trey on Web. Yeah, really interview. got a good Absolutely. feel for him, what he's about. Um, and I like I said, I thought he said all the right things. He hit right notes. Um, and I like I said, he is a he's a big get for OU, and I think allows them now a lot of flexibility. You know, you could, like I said, you continue to recruit him, you continue to work, but now you bring in Richard Young, or you continue on with Trey Wisner. I mean, they have a lot of ways they can go, or they may say, you know, if they if they can find a way to close Javante Barnes, you've got Barnes, Sawchuck, and Relique Brown, and then you've got uh, you've already uh, got Trey on Web committed in twenty twenty three. Kind of depending on what maybe happens with Kennedy Brooks, Eric Gray, those sort of situations, any guys that might go into the portal, you might be done with running back recruiting before anybody's you know taking their first junior season football practice. I mean that that could be the deal. So there, the running back room has gone from very dangerous to man, this might be really good in very short time. How about I mean. I, I'll say this. I don't know why I take pleasure in this. I think it's all the years of watching Tommy Frazier just destroy Oklahoma. I just, I really enjoy Nebraska losing a hometown because they have so few of them. So few Division One players coming out of Nebraska. For them to lose one to Oklahoma and the Iowa dude, I mean, my <laughs> God. <laughs> I Iowa thought about recruiting. I thought about jumping in on Iowa guy and I was like, man, you know what? This this guy's an Iowa football fan. I can't do that to him. I just quote tweeted him with a gif of the hay bale toss. I don't understand why they were so. I guess uh, here here's the, he, here's my question. He was offered. Caden Helms was offered by Iowa and didn't have him as one of his finalists. Oh, so that's what, that was my question. Flighted. I was like, why is Iowa <laughs> so upset about this? I didn't even know that they were recruiting the kid. Guys, when you have to think back to the glory days of Brad Banks, I mean, come on, like you got to go easy on him. You know, it's 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 tough living. Um, that wasn't the guy yeah. that got hit by the sky cam, was it? No. Who? I don't think so. He <laughs> no. was their best player though at the time. I do remember driving through that parking oh, lot. He was, a, and was like, these people know how to tell you. No, they do shit. know how to do that. 
Like you can tell that you're you're a struggling program by how well you tailgate. I'll tell you what, man, Iowa and Iowa State, they both both programs they, bring, they, they like to yeah. drink. Yeah. I was a good drinking no, Ames si- is a first, drinking place. Even before tailgating got huge cuz tailgating hasn't always been like at K-State it's always been huge, but that was strictly because they were all Chiefs fans that that's all they knew and they had the big, you know, asphalt parking lot around the stadium. So they were made to tailgate. Like that stadium was made for tailgating. Ames is on a different level. Like it literally looks like it, you could if they weren't wearing you know whatever their colors are was that garnet and gold or whatever uh, you would literally think that like it, you were in uh, Bill's Mafia territory or something one hundred percent I mean it's crazy and I think that there's probably a common denominator between both of those fan bases kind of shitty football I guess except for what Buffalo's doing live through. cold weather and drinking yeah no doubt guys as the as the pods resident uh, English soccer fan the crazy fan the like. I mean, they're hooligans. They call them firms. And there is they an were the expression. ones that were attacking the Italians as they tried to leave. Yes. <laughs> Basically, the the better and tougher your firm is, the shittier your team is. Yeah. So, like, that that's kind of the, the litmus test. Like, you know, Manchester United, shitty firm, great football team. Like, it kind of works out that way. So there's probably some correlation here, whether it's on either side of the Atlantic. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I I don't know, maybe Iowa State, the partying lessons now that they're good. I guess we'll find out. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll just, year, so. yeah. We'll, we'll, That's right, I had to take the lone trip last year, the only person that could, they would let go. Boy, Eddie, Eddie, well, uh, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie I, I am so happy for Eddie. Last year was so frustrating for him. Not being able to go to games, especially road games, it just sucked. It sucked for everybody. Yeah, Dean. I. What? Go ahead, Eddie. Oh, I was no, no. Go ahead. I was going to say something derogatory. I I was going to say just being part of the group chat during the Cotton Bowl is one of the or not. Uh, j- just watching Eddie, like he seemed like he was happy for the first time in like four months yeah he really just was. having even some access because it wasn't as good as what he was used to but it was still so much better than what he'd become accustomed to yeah i'm ready to here's get... justin harrington standing next to Broyles. <laughs> i'm ready to i'm ready to get screwed over by ou again this year so we're ready to roll i, I there's it, it, i think the big 12 taught us that that's just not necessary. I think there will be one school that still does Zoom and one school that doesn't allow photographers on the field. If OU still does Zoom... I, in fact, I can oh almost boy. tell you that I bet there's a 95% chance that happens. I might have heard some things. I will literally yell at somebody. I'm not doing that shit again. I don't want us in the red room. I'm not doing that shit again for a year. I think there's a good chance of that. And for why, I don't know. I feel like channeling the It must be less work for somebody else. I have no idea. (laughs) I feel like channeling the crazy guy that I I think I've talked about on the pod from outside Malachi Nelson's game before I got in. There's a vaccine now. It's not real anymore. Like... That I was like, you are crazy, sir. And this was like back in well, like yeah, the, February. For, the farther away we get away week. from that, he might have been right. Yeah, he wasn't right then. Now, like I, you can make the case, but then I was like, no, you just crazy, man. And he's screaming at this poor little PTA mom. It was it was bad. It wasn't good for anybody. I'm going to be a terror on Zooms this year, if it's the case. We're going to have green screen. We're going to be animating shit. <laughs> we're, I, don't, we're, I just we're don't know why they don't like do background checks. Talking. Do background that. checks. We can cut people out of the media room real quickly. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um. So... Outside of that, I mean, now I, we always talk about looking forward. What's next? What is next on the recruit? I mean, we were looking forward to this date for so long of Malachi Nelson's commitment announcement. 
I, I feel like it's almost there's one more speed hump and then it's football season. Like you get yep. through the end of July and that last barbecue or whatever they have planned. Whatever mm-hmm. they do next weekend. Yep. And then it's basically football season after that. I mean, training camps are going to be in full swing. You, I would imagine. I know that we haven't heard anything about a local media day and or a uh, oh, meet what's the, the Sooners meet the Sooners day stuff. But like that's usually the first week of August, is it not? Yep. Well, and you know, it's like I've been watching some of the SEC media days, and they're talking about six teams or eighty percent or better. Uh, you know, in terms of vaccinations, like they probably just use that as an excuse not to have meet the Sooners day is that not everybody's vaccinated. That doesn't really bother me. I mean, I know it sucks for kids, and I enjoyed going to it when I was a kid as well, but I'm not going to get in trouble for shaming people again. Well, I mean, the thing about it is, it is for the kids. And people will have a, people on the board. They've already had, They've already said that they have a problem with it if they don't have it. I mean, you're going to have a lot of upset people if you don't do it. And I was told, you know, back when I was having meetings about NLI stuff that I don't think that they'll want to say this out loud, but I think, you know, the, the, like Spencer Rattler is going to be at some big autograph signing like July 31st, making like 150 Mm -hmm. bucks a pop. Is he going to want to sign somebody that comes up with a full size helmet knowing that, you know, that's money that he's going to miss out on? I do wonder what the, uh, like the recommendations are nowadays because, I remember, like back when we were in school, it's like don't sign a bunch of shit because that brings down the you know like, the price or whatever right, of your yeah, autograph. Yeah, or I don't even know what that would be called. The you want this the demand to be higher than the supply. Sure. Like I wonder if there will be guys that are like, no, I don't sign anything anymore. I think it'll be few and far between, but I think it'll happen. You just got to pay ten thousand dollars like tech sags. <laughs> I don't. I'm really curious to know how that thing works out. It's a bad look. No, it is. It's is Linda doing dishes? No, no. It's it's me moving. I had um, I had dogs about to go crazy. They needed to go outside, so I was like, I'm gonna get out before they start like barking and howling. In Tiffany the has of the pod. proactively kicked him out of the house during the pod. Yes, she like she wouldn't shock me if there's some sort of listening device in this room, and she has tracked that there's a Linda conversation <laughs> happening. <laughs> Uh, so, no, but I mean, the whole, you know, $10,000 for an interview thing. I mean, that is, I would imagine it's kind of like what we talked about last time. It's someone that wants the publicity out of it as much as they want to pay sure. the players. Like, I don't know. And that makes sense. I mean, I mean, if you're in Austin and you're a realtor, not in Austin, if you're in, you know, that area of Texas, you probably, maybe they have offices in Austin. I don't know. But everybody and their dog is moving to Texas. So... I mean, I'm sure, you know, Frisco is crazy right now. Austin's crazy right now. Uh, I'm sure you're making a lot of money being in the realtor business right now if you're if you're a big firm. Oh, I don't think that you can get rid of houses quick enough right now. But, I mean, that's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like when Kings of Leon did that NFT stuff. They were the first people to it. If you could be the first, like, there weren't really any big splash paydays for athletes at that point like that was the first thing i saw it on usa today i saw it on espn it was on my yahoo alerts i mean that got coverage everywhere so they probably knew what they were doing yeah no doubt some degree now if they keep paying players ten thousand dollars for interviews then you're going to be like okay what are we really doing with this this isn't like you pay ten thousand dollars to somebody you expect that they're going to do something with you every week Throughout the season. Yeah, and as I understand, that was just a one-time interview. One-off, like, right? Straight-up yeah. cash mm-hmm. or a check? Is that how they're doing it? What was it? Was it like a event? I don't know if it's a video interview, if it's like a sit-down thing. I mean, they have the capabilities of doing all that stuff. That shit's incredible to me. And how long will it be? Will it be an hour? I mean, could you even talk to someone for an hour? I guess it it's just it, my idea of the whole thing is skewed anyways because I can't imagine paying 190 bucks for somebody to send me a minute and a half video of something that, you know, whether it be from Spencer Rattler or whoever. So I guess I'm kind of messed up when that, when we but even get to that But you had boys that did that. 
that paid Spencer Rattler to do a cameo. Yeah, but that, I think that was like, you know, 15, 15 buddies that chipped in to basically mess with somebody. I don't know. It's a pretty good idea. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny. I mean, it was funny. You should have had him say some weird shit, though. Well, I didn't. I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't pay for it. It just got sent to me. Not him doing the video. Oh, for okay. Me, but just okay. it was one of my buddies that sent it. And was like, "Hey, I got this. Look at it." Well, look. I you know all this stuff and and I saw where Nick Benito signed with somebody recently. Um, and it's kind of you know as I've kind of heard from people that are doing this, it's. You know, the, pe- the main people that are signing people up are sports agents. I mean, there's no, like, NIL companies. I'm sure they're being formed now. Schools are working mm-hmm. with, uh, like, this uh, influencer. I went and, like, signed up for their thing just to see what their marketplace looked like. And then I got, like, the FBI search warrant came after me. Like, they were basically demanding that I call them and talk to them before they created my account and stuff. It was weird. Uh, I just wanted to look around. And so you have the you have the open doors thing that those Nebraska players started up with, but I don't know how many deals are really coming. I know, I think it was who was it that talked to Joe Castiglione? Was it Kirk Bowles? Kirk Bowles put out a statement. I didn't know if that was twenty five athletes that were were probably involved in nil nil deals. Yeah, and he noted a couple softball players too. He He didn't name anybody specifically, but he said that softball players were a big part of it, or not big part of it, but they were known to have signed with people but yeah i mean you know like us we're exploring certain things but it would be in line with what we do you know whether it would be you know doing a podcast with somebody um as a guest every week or something like that sure i mean we're not we're not in the business of trying to funnel money to athletes to do one interview no if we were funneling money to athletes they'd be shaving points <laughs> And, and we, we would be yeah, in on it. and we would all be getting yeah, exactly like we're paying money to make more money. But it's that, called the down payment. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I mean, I, to me, there's, I, I think probably the people listening, there's not that much interest in it unless you know the board's gotten kind of interested in it. Like, how do we how do we raise a bunch of money for people? Like, that's just what the board does. They're always sure. talking about bags and bagmen and competing with the SEC and. I think that'll continue, but how this plays out in reality, I don't. I will say this: like Mario Williams, he works at it. Like he's doing, he's live streaming. He's got merchandise. Like he hasn't played it down yet, but you can tell he's got people behind him that are kind of entrepreneurs. I feel like his whole thing has kind of gone under the radar a little bit. Yeah, and it's a different kind of look at the marketing approach because he's selling himself as a two sport athlete. Like that's what the number two means in that two W in his, uh, in his logo or whatever. And I, I find that kind of interesting. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, he's, he's doing it in an echo chamber. So unless you're following him on Instagram, Mm -hmm. you really don't know. That's why media is going to be important to these guys. Like him being a freshman, uh, and not being able to talk to the media, that's going to be a problem for him because he's got all these things set up. Lincoln's gonna have to revisit that or something. I thought, and I kind of thought that there was at least an insinuation that well, he was going to. Well, if everything's on fucking Zoom, then yeah. we won't have any say in it. Did you? I see mean, what? we might have to pay him ten thousand dollars to be able to talk to him. <laughs> Did you see what uh, North Carolina announced this morning about the? Uh, yeah, that the the group. Yep. The group licensing? licensing, so they'll be able to use North Carolina's trademarks. And Why stuff? wouldn't every school do? I that? know. I don't. That doesn't make sense and to it, me. It, to me, they talk about here's. The, the problem I see is they talk about how they don't want this to divide the locker room. But when you when you don't allow the players to even say Oklahoma football or use the OU interlocking logo, it really highlights them as individuals and not players on your favorite team or representing your favorite. Like, people love Spencer Rattler because he's OU's quarterback, not because he has a cool logo. I've talked about this before. Like, it... it, it it, you're doing exactly what you're afraid of, which is people being singled out and separated from your team when you don't allow them to use the logos. It's just a weird look. And I think they should let them do it. I would imagine that gets remedied at some point. I wonder at what point the NCAA kind of gathers a task force or whatever and starts to make changes like mid-season. 
I mean, you can't really do anything to change the state law. No. I wonder how much, uh, like, things will slow down by the start of the season. Or do you think we're going to be hearing about name, image, likeness, like deals, like during <laughs> OU Texas week? I think the good thing is, Josh, you've probably heard this too. Um, you hear a lot of players that have their head, you know, a good head on their shoulders saying things like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a football player first and I want to be good at football. I'm not as concerned with name, image, likeness right now. I think that's the way to approach it. Oh, I, I don't think there's any question. And I, I tweeted out something last week that I think people took the wrong way. And it was kind of a, if you're not trying to build your brand on social media, if you're not talking to, you know, like as a recruit is really what I was talking about. But, you know, on social media, talking to guys like me or, you know, when, when Eddie comes out to interview Malachi Nelson, not making the most of that opportunity. If you're not doing those things, it's going to show up when you get to college. Now, don't get me wrong. Malachi Nelson, if he's a starting quarterback in Oklahoma, he's going to do fine. That's absolutely the case. But if you start talking about you want to move from beyond the local, you know, whatever it may be, whether it's a gas station or dealership, into more national stuff, you need to have reach that goes beyond just you're the local team's quarterback. Like You have to have something that grabs people. You have to be engaging in some way. And so, I, but at the same time, I, I understand that, like, if, if that none of that matters. Like, it, that's good to be engaging and fun. But, guys, I mean, you know, a guy we've talked about a lot in this podcast, Buki, as great as he is on social and all the interaction he has, he's not raking in money right now because he hasn't been that great of a player. Yeah. So you, the, the the player has to come first. There's no question. But if you're wanting to maximize what that can mean, then yeah, you do have to get out and get amongst the people and be kind of, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if friendly is the right word for it. Just you have to be available, I guess would be the way to say it. But yeah, you can be as available <laughs> as you want. And if you're not any good, it just doesn't matter. It's If you have a platform, companies are going to want to work with you. Yep. And that's what yeah. Buki has. It's kind of like the, I guess it's not even a, a great comparison, but it's kind of like when people got all been out of shape when the Addison Ray stuff uh, at the UFC fight yeah, a couple weeks uh -huh. ago. It's like, she has three point something million followers on TikTok. Of course somebody's going to want to use her platform. Yeah. No, they don't want you that went to insert journalism school that has 25 followers. Sorry. there's It's a, it's a no-brainer. Do I agree with it? She also no. kind of poked the bear a little bit too with her tweet, though. I thought it was a little funny. I thought it was okay. Do I agree with it though? No, of course not. But just, no, people are going to get just like job opportunities, just like athletes that played at OU or OSU or wherever that get media opportunities mm -hmm. in front of others. It happens. Let those loud little kids in the Big Twelve Media Day should have hazed those kids. <laughs> <laughs> they literally were just screaming the entire time. Yeah, and they were a fun story until they their part was done, and then they were just playing the games and being really loud in the background uh look i it i think the best example like what you mentioned josh like they're going to be guys that aren't even good at football that have some niche uh that are going to make some money off of social media that are doing things like you're talking about i mean just look at the fresno state twins that was really the first big example of nil they nobody cared about them playing basketball they were just huge on tiktok and just danced in skippy outfits. This is this kind of sounds bad. Are they even good at basketball? I really don't know. I don't either. And I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter. Boost Mobile doesn't care. No. You know who could have had some fun with it? And I was sitting here trying to think of who it was. You remember a couple years ago when OU was having all the fun, the videos? I, I believe it was Connor McGinnis doing all the holding stuff. And they had all the, the videos. You could do something with that. Like, you, you exactly. could make that into something where you do make a little cash. Again, are you going to make Spencer Rattler money? No. But you, you could, you know, have your monthly car payment or something handled. I mean, you could do something along those lines just because you've made yourself kind of fun and engaging on, on social media. So, I mean, that stuff's there, but you do have to have an end, some way to make it interesting and connect. 
And, you know, it, it, that is if you're not very, very good on the field. I mean, Adrian Peterson could have been plywood, and he would have gotten plenty of money if this would have been here in his time. So th- there's, there's, there's obviously levels to it, but you could, do, you could do something fun. I mean, there's no doubt. Do you think, like, Nick Saban's going to have an office full of, like, interns? Like, their only job is to monitor, like, Instagram Live for uh, other teams uh, What like that might be broadcasting their coach's pregame statement or something like that, kind of like, uh, who was it, Juju Smith-Schuster that got in trouble for that? Or, no, that was Antonio Brown, right, that got in trouble for all of that? Like, broadcasting locker room stuff? Or was that Juju? Uh, no, I think it was Juju. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Juju's with yes. the dancing and yeah, all that. Yeah, but like those kids. I mean, now, like he apologized, but yeah. I remember it was the OU Texas game a couple of years ago that they started broadcasting their locker room celebration immediately after the game was over on Instagram. Was that after Mike Stoops punched Curtis Bolton? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Well, I mean, but that's always been so weird to me because Curtis. I, I mean, everybody him, saw him getting the corn dog on the concourse at halftime. And somehow he made it back in for the punch. I, I never understood the math on that. He used all the tickets at one stop. <laughs> I've seen it happen once, and I've, you'll see it happen again. Uh, you a saw about a corn dog is your halftime meal. Saban talked about this uh, this morning at the Texas High School Football Coaches Association, where Lincoln Riley talked for the first time. Uh, it's the first time a sitting first head OU coach. head coach sat, uh, spoke since 1969. I have no idea how that's even possible, but. He said that Bryce Young's already been offered seven figures as far as NIL stuff goes. And he's not even the, I guess, quote-unquote, starting quarterback yet, which I think is hilarious. Like, I think everything, like... I think Joe Batner po- pointed it out on Twitter uh, just a minute ago. It's like, coaches are no longer going to be able to drag out these, you know, so, so, so-called uh, quarterback competitions because the guy's going to already have gotten money out of the deal. Like, yeah, I'm the starter. <laughs> I'm getting beaten out by this <laughs> joker. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of years, Caleb Williams is not going to be like, well, yeah, I'm going to play stupid for you and cost myself a couple hundred thousand dollars here. I'm going right. to just be dumb about it. Yeah, I mean, that you'll have, you know, as soon as Spencer Rattler's gone, people will be lining up to sign deals with Caleb Williams. Just assuming. If I'm a company well, and I had a couple... Now. Yeah, exactly, oh, yeah. Bob. If I had yep. a couple thousand dollars and it didn't really matter to me, why not? So do it. You're rich. No, I'm not. Because no, because of you. you're not monetizing. <laughs> because because of, of you. Because of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll work on making you rich so you can pay people. Your t-shirt line will be paying people. We're going to just send extra smalls to Kyler Murray as soon as they come off the, the press. <laughs> That would be amazing. Just do it every time. Send it to the Cardinals front office. <laughs> every time a shirt comes, just send it care of Kyler Murray. But oh, it's going to be, be an great. extra small. Maybe mm. we should do a shirt of his shirt. A t-shirt oh, version that, of his. The shirt that he was wearing in that thing. He's wearing extra, extra large. $1,200 shirt or whatever it was. Not even that good looking. Oh. That's unbelievable. I feel like you're still trying to hurt Kyler about this. Like you're, you're, you're trying. This is part of you. I don't know. Just getting back he did, at him. Josh, when, he did when, say when triple X. I mean, come on. Yeah, he fat shame. No, I'm not saying. I, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it's not fair. I'm just saying I, it feels like Carrie's or Eddie's working out some demons here. I, he's always been pissed about it. I don't really care. I, that always gets Clearly. a lot of run. I still, my still favorite is the. The Baker interaction inside the indoor about the class he was going to. And oh, about his favorite classical is, uh, art piece? <laughs> <laughs> that was back in 2016. Yeah, it was him, him and Dee Dee. Yeah. Yep. One of my favorites was when you asked Blake Bell if he had a chance to check out all the pledges that were on campus during rush week. <laughs> yeah, I did that too. He literally blushed. Like, you, you embarrassed him. <laughs> It, was it pledges or uh, was it during like work it was, week it was, it was, for the sorority? It was rush because it was it was. Was it guys or camp. girls? I can't remember. It was the girls. Super I mean. Bowl champion. No big deal. 
Man, was, the Beldozer would have made a bunch of money in, oh, off NIL man. stuff. He would have. Yeah. I think uh, Gabe would have made a bunch of money like, just being an Oklahoma City oh, guy. Olive Garden. Sure. I, I think, say, what if Gabe would have just committed to, like, made, like, a like T-shirt with, like, spaghetti or something, like, just paused. Look, he, awesome. got, he got That'd a lifetime amazing. pass to gift card to Olive Garden. He's doing okay out of the time. Yeah, it, would, it definitely paid off at the end. All right. Um, really, outside of that, I mean, you know, not a lot of football stuff. No, I, I will say just from kind of what I saw as far as everything kind of wrapping up in L.A., I there is, I think that the movement towards a Makai Lemon announcement early August is probably circled right now. Getting the kind of the uh, buzz was that yeah, it, OU was and Makai really was over better. at the Nelson's house afterwards. I mean, those families are extremely okay. close, or at least that's kind of the the feel that I got. So we'll see. I mean, needless to say, Malachi is definitely in the kid's ear about getting to Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, C- Carrie, and that's you not necessarily asked, you know what's next news, though. Yeah, we knew. Yeah. You asked. You asked what's next. I think Makai is obviously the one because he's already kind of put a date on. I don't. I don't think he set a firm date. It's just kind of early August. Like I don't know that it's they have a day or at least not one they've publicly presented. Um, Correct. I think the Luke has stuff has calmed down a little bit. He put a top eight out the other day. Um, it, it feels like that's just you know like I think. There was a possibility it was going to happen on this timeline. I think now it's been extended. I still think Oklahoma has a a commanding lead in his recruitment. So I I think it's going to be okay. Um, The only other guy I would say other than Makai that I'm watching pretty closely right now would be Kenyatta Jackson, the defensive lineman from South Florida. Um, There's other guys, you know, Brandon Ennis, like I said, with the relationship with Trayon Webb. And obviously Oklahoma having their quarterback in his class and, you know, him being the number one wide receiver, that's, I mean, it's possible. I mean, anything could happen. But um, those are the two that I think if you were going to say between now and the start of the season that I would think are the most likely, I would say it's Kenyatta Jackson and um, Makai Lemon. Very nice. Um... You know, it's kind of crazy that, and we were talking about it before we started recording, but we're putting together like early September, late August travel schedules right now for high school football. It's not too far away. I mean, less than a month for some of these schools. Yeah, like I said, uh, and I, I that that's a, actually a perfect segue. I know I had talked a few times. I need to um, clarify this on the board as well. I was planning to see Xavier Bryce actually today, and that's why Kerry uh, referenced it early on. We we had some weird scheduling issues thought we were gonna have to do this a couple different times over the last couple days uh i really was just checking in with his coach to make sure it was going to be okay that i was there Xavion had told me last week they'd be going on their normal schedule this week and i was literally either going to drive up late last night to dallas or first thing this morning and his coach messages me right before carrie and i are going to record something yesterday and it's like, oh, yeah, we're out for the week. We're at the coach's convention. And, you know, uh, we'll be back, you know, XX. And I was like, okay. So just glad I checked in with the coach or I would have driven all the way to Dallas probably at, you know, roughly 3 a.m. Um, and glad I didn't do that. So, but we will be, we're going to get the Xavier Bryce, you know, video. We're going to see him in person. We're going to get that handled in the very near future. It just didn't, didn't come off quite like we'd hoped this week. Very and good. because of that, you told OU to drop him. <laughs> yeah, so when, when he says, I've lost my scholarship offer, you can know because of Josh. I was the hatchet man. Yeah, I, I did that work. Bob, any uh, any basketball developments? No, I've, I've been uh, asking if we can maybe get some access. You know, I don't know if they'll let us watch a practice. Or, you know, you get so accustomed because you know, Lon opened every practice during the season, and sometimes you could show up in the summer and it didn't matter. So don't know how Porter Mojo runs things. Trying to get, you know, one last interview before we go all in with football and just try to clear up the roster situation and – what his early early thoughts are about this first month of practice 
All right. Uh, we will be back again next week, uh, but we wanted to get this pod out just a little bit early uh, since uh, all the big news just happened this weekend and people were asking for an emergency pod. Uh, but now we're all back together again. Good to go. And uh, we need to set a line of demarcation as far as like what constitutes a line of what demarcation. Okay, you got that down. Yeah, thank you. Uh, of what constitutes a emergency pod. I think it should be a firing, a death, like an something bad. resigning, a yeah. resigning, an ungodly, unspeakable loss. Schedule that for some time in October, probably. A, a key player getting kicked off the team, or a felony arrest. That is understandable, like a homicide. I, I will. Speak I'm not getting together board, for somebody. Though. What? We we put ourselves in this position by doing Caleb and Latrell last year. Yeah, that was a big one though. Those were big ones. Now it's just So how's Malachi not? Because it's just I'm, I'm been there the done that. Here. Been there done that, Bob. <laughs> wow. Five star quarterbacks aren't that big of a deal anymore around here. And Eddie is not gonna be invited back to the Nelson residence. <laughs> I was in LA. <laughs> It's of course it was a big deal. deal. You, just, you just told me it's not a big deal. Well, guess what? You're getting sent with podcasting equipment no matter where you go from now on. I, we could do that. <laughs> that would be a lot easier. That would be a lot easier. But I wouldn't have wanted to take away from your family time with the Nelsons. No, it was a great time. We went over and had some tacos afterwards, which were just unbelievable. The yeah. Modelo's taste a little bit better in Turkey, South Los Angeles. Shrimp. Uh, no, it was, it was shrimp, chicken, and uh, I, I guess uh, not uh, carnitas, I believe. Is that right? Maybe. Mm. Barbacoa or carnitas? Yeah, one of the two. It was, it was awesome, one's though. One's pork, one's beef. It was really cool just being out there for something like that, though, because you know it was obviously a huge deal for that family and just a huge deal for kind of everybody. Like there was Some of his Little League coaches were over there. It was, it was really cool. Great family. Really nice time to meet everybody. Hearing you guys talk about Eric, he sounds like a really good dude. Very good guy. Very good guy. Eric's the father, and um, you know they couldn't have been more accommodating. It was awesome. Because, you know, they didn't have to meet meet us over there on Saturday to do anything. Yeah, that's cool. And it was awesome. Now, we appreciate uh, everyone. I mean, all the recruits like that. I mean, people always say, well, you know, you guys never break any because recruits just break it now. What are you good for? But... It's great when we get kids. Jacob Sexton did the same that, you know, trust us sure. enough to to do a commitment interview before they have their, you know, big enough. I'm just surprised that, you know, kids aren't doing like live announcements on their social media more. Mm -hmm. I will say it's like I think sometimes we just, you know, and even fans probably more so see the commitment. And it's just like, OK, add them to the list and you forget how big that day is for each kid individually the families. commitment yeah, yeah. like it, I, I just and being there you about, kind of forget about stuff or not being there you forget about stuff like, like i remember that. this year josh was like when did the fourth of july become commitment central uh but that's kind of what it is it's a chance for them to get together with family and maybe sure. family they don't see on a regular sure. basis and make it a really special day you know i was talking to one of the guys that even though josh hates grew up him. kind of basically coaching with uh eric and coaching like you know malachi's teams from the time he was five years old mm -hmm. and it, it's it's incredible and it's kind of crazy to think about it and just like watching a kid like that grow up and then finally commit to a school like oklahoma and you know i think from what i kind of gathered it was like you know, for somebody like that to you know and they knew that he's going to be a big recruit and all that kind of stuff but at the same time it's like he's going to a or has committed to a blue blood program it, it's a huge deal you know the um, the thing that I that I always hit on, and again, it kind of ties into everything we've talked about here. Whether it was name, image, likeness, and just the recruiting aspect of it all, and it's something our guy Woody Womack talks about all the time. These guys that do it on these big event weekends, like Malachi, and the, this past weekend, nothing. It was a big, it was a lot going on in my world, but it, it was an ideal weekend to do what you're doing. But doing it on the Fourth of July. There's so many other things going on, and so many people have their interest and attention in other places. You're not getting the attention you think you're getting out of that. Now, if you're doing it because you're with your family, okay, that that's fine. But I know it's not coincidence that a lot of these things happen on big holidays, 
And you're hurting yourself with that because you're not getting the same. It's, it's like a news dump. Like, it's on the weekend. It's on a holiday. Like, people's That's, attention yeah, is part, elsewhere. Yeah, if yeah. you're doing it on, like, a Wednesday in the middle of October, man, you're going to get plenty of run out of that. You're going to get a lot of attention because everybody, A, is thinking about football, and B, there's nothing else going on. And Josh really wants to start drinking early on the 4th of July, and you f*** that up. <laughs> That's There's a our fact. Two, our two cents on everything. Don't do it on the weekend. It's not it, – it, people just don't read as much. I don't read don't as it, much. Yeah, I'm people don't traffic as sites as much on the weekends, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, we had great numbers this week, but I guarantee they'd have been bigger on a Tuesday. Let's try that out sometime. Hmm. Yeah. So we just need to. Uh, okay, well, Josh so has always said that he wished England would have won the Revolutionary War. Anyway, tell him, tell him to wait till Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, if Josh could time travel, he'd go back and help Britain win. So the Fourth of July commitment. If things would have really gone right on 1776. Damn colonials! I could. See, I mean, I could see the Fourth. You being like so super into Fourth of July too. Oh, no, I'm one of those guys, like, I have a shirt for you every the, year. Like, I buy a 4th of July uh, shirt every year. Yeah, yeah I remember year. you Same. had the... Yeah. You mm-hmm. had... You were Undefeated the first person, World Wars. Th- yeah, that was... The, he, Josh was the first person I ever saw that said... Uh, Loved that shirt. World War... Undefeated, undefeated in World Wars. Yeah. Only war we ever lost was the uh, Civil. Haven't you said that before? What? <laughs> Oh my god! I'm kidding. Uh, no, I've got the back-to-back World War champs. Those are great all, shirts. Though. Yeah, back-to-back World War champs. I remember that one. Yep. Um, uh, I mean, I, I can't. This this year, I actually ordered it on like June 27th, and it didn't get here till the 6th of July. I was like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. The, the, so I've got next year covered for my shirt, but uh, not a. Uh, this year, I had to go with a retread. All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Uh, thanks, guys, for another great pod. And uh, it's a big recruiting uh, week, big recruiting month. Go check out uh, Soonerscoop.com. Uh, Bob's got a story up there today highlighting uh, all the nine commitments since July 3rd. And uh, check out the rankings, all that good stuff. Get on the message boards, ask us questions, uh, whatever. We'd love for you guys, if you're not a member of Sooner Scoop, to become one uh, because you like us. And that's good enough reason, isn't it? All right. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week for another edition of the Unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com.